Greetings, people of Earth. I'm Rick Harold. Thanks for listening to my audio and video podcast. Today, I'm just talking a little bit about why do software or why do hardware or why do management or whatever. So I feel very much like a lucky dude. When I was in high school, in one of my earlier stories I gave, I just happened to play around with this giant punch tape computer. And it was just fascinating to me how cool it was that I could create these things and then see my game that I wrote that would insult people. I thought that was so awesome. Um, that was one of the things that got me into software. Now, I was, I was always going to be an engineer or a scientist. Um, I've always been fascinated with any kind of science, really anything, um, is interesting. And I knew I was going to college, and I had to figure out what I was going to major in. So I had played around with electronics, and I had thought about being a, an electrical engineer. But after working and playing with this computer, I'm like, wow, I can get something done right away and immediately see my the benefit of what I just did. So, so I was actually 17. You're 17 year old going into college, and I just picked computer science. Now, luckily at Northwestern, electrical engineering, computer science, one department. So it's an engineering department there. And I did electrical engineering work too, although it's mostly computer science stuff I focused on. But I was very lucky because I really loved working on it um, and because I could get feedback right away. And it was, that was something that was really motivating to me. And I think through the whole history of what I've done, through all the products, um, that's something that was software. It's always been pretty awesome to see. And I like also seeing other people and what they're doing with software and hardware too. And it's changed now. It's a lot different in terms of what you can get done and how quickly you can get it done. Um, but now with cloud computing, the software's even more explosive, right? I can take, and I talk about a Lambda function, which is a single unit function that you can spin up on Amazon in the, or equivalent Google and Microsoft ones. And I can have it spawn out to a million of them and do whatever I want it to do and then have it spin down or have it just shrink and grow in demand. So my software program, app, service, whatever, can do and scale and be cross geography with effectively infinite space of storage or functionality. And I can do it dynamically, right? It's really only limited by me or my team and what we want to do with it. Um, you know, it used to be you'd have a machine and you'd have to have a certain capacity to it. But that was still cool, right? Because you got to create things. So that was the thing, why software? When I was at Northwestern, the physics department and chemistry department, because I did really well in the classes, approached me to be in their departments. And I believe me, I, was, I like physics. It's actually pretty awesome. Um, but I was already in computer science. I really liked what I was doing. So that's why software. Now, we're doing hardware now, too, here. So that's part of the crowdfunding stuff. Hardware is different than it used to be. You can create things a lot easier now than 10 years ago, 20 years ago, and certainly when I started, um, by outsourcing. You can easily get this stuff done. Sometimes you can put together Raspberry Pis or similar things to create products with peripherals and 3D print enclosures or wherever my Bitcoin went. I, I showed that in a different video of a 3D printed Bitcoin. It's fake, right? Um, but... The flexibility and what's possible now is just amazing. Uh, the next step someday is going to be, you know, you just have the uh, Star Trek machine create it for you in front of you. It trans doesn't transport, whatever the, the, the food replicators are called. So it's getting like that. It's pretty awesome in terms of electrical things you can do, the mechanical things with the 3D printing school, and then, you know, going through prototypes and then having them sent out to be officially made. Um, Software to me is always the big one. And of course, the fact that you can constantly update it and change it is great. So I talk to my kids a lot about this. And of course, they can do whatever they want. They already know that. They listen to dad talk about all this stuff. And I talk about a lot of different topics. Um, but I tell them why, right? Why do I like software? What's so neat about it? It's super powerful. Anybody in the world now is going to be able to create things, get it on the internet, use servers that they never would have access to. NASA and places like this can also get tons of machines to do various calculations and then spin those machines down. 
that you don't have to procure and get budget for. It's just, uh, it's beautiful. And um, so that's a little bit of why software, why hardware, my mechanical now, that's a new one with the 3D printing. So that's it. All right. Uh, ask any questions, of course. Thanks for listening and take it easy.